I'm really passionate about is transparency. Mm-hmm. And I would very clearly put at the top of these emails that this is an automated email. Like, not only does that give transparency, like, oh, okay, like, I got this random email. Like, wow, that was so fast. Like, of course it was fast because I didn't send it. Workflows is a podcast about saving you time and money in your photography business. I'm your host, Scott Wyden-Kithowitz, a photographer and content creator who struggles with dyslexia, colorblindness, introversion, and anxiety stemming from years of being bullied as a child. Guess what? Workflows have been my rock. I have workflows for every aspect of my life. That's why I am so happy to bring you Workflows, a podcast presented by Imagine. As a company dedicated to saving you time and money in your photography business, it makes sense to enhance and expand the conversation to all things Workflows. Tune in and subscribe to hear stories, strategies, and tools that can be your rock. Hear from people just like you. Get to work with Workflows. Dawn Richardson is a software engineer turned wedding photographer who helps creative entrepreneurs go from tech overwhelmed to tech empowered. Her mission is to create a safe, fun, and welcoming corner of the internet where creative entrepreneurs can learn to leverage and implement technology and business so they can spend less time working and more time with the people that matter most. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? When she's not working, you can find her spending time with her husband and two little girls or searching for the best margarita in San Antonio. As you can see, Dawn Richardson is a perfect match to everything that Imagine stands for with getting you back to focusing on what you love, like family. So that is why I'm very excited to bring on Dawn to Workflows so she can share her insights with you. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Dawn Richardson. Hey, Dawn. Welcome to Workflows. Hey. I'm so excited to be here, Scott. I've been like, we've been talking about this for a while, but mm-hmm. today's here and I am pumped. Yeah. Yeah. So as a quick heads up, Dawn is recovering from being under the weather. <laughs> um, so uh, we are working through this. This is just the nature of podcasting. Um, yeah. It just, it is what it is. So this is a, it's going to be a good time. It is, um, you, you know, it is yeah. what it is. And it's just like wedding photographers, right? Like, I feel like mm-hmm. we have a different kind of threshold for like illness. Like, <laughs> we obviously want to keep our clients safe, but like, I need to be really sick to miss a wedding. So, right. like, here we are. I'm just here, you know, working through it. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. We all, it's like, a, it's like being a teacher, you build up an immune system as well. But then, you know, there, then when you get hit, you get hit hard. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't. I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old, and I swear mm-hmm. I get everything that they get like four times over. So I'm just yeah. like constantly, I'm like, where's my immune system? Like, this is great yeah. for them, but where is it for me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my wife is actually feeling ill right now. Oh, she no. actually uh, is on a way to pick up our son from camp and then dropping him off when we are done with recording. And then yeah. I have to take my son and go get my daughter from camp uh, oh, because she has to go to the doctor. So... Um, <laughs> I get it. I'm right there in the weeds with you. Parenting. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So for all the listeners out there who don't know who you are, can you get, um, you know, I'm doing an intro already. I'm going to be recording an intro, but if you can give a quick summary of like, you know, what you, what your, your past and where you are now. So everybody understands, because we're approaching this different, this episode, so that everybody understands um, where you're coming from when you provide your answers to my questions. Absolutely. I'm not your typical Imagineer, but I am here and all in. That's for sure. So I'm Dawn. I live in San Antonio. Um, My story is a little bit of a full circle story. I actually started my career as a software engineer and I spent over a decade in IT. I worked for Apple. We launched the first um, iPad and iPhone 4. So that's how long ago I was there. Mm. Um, Got my degree in information systems, went full time as a Java developer And while I was working full time, I decided to buy a camera with my big girl money from my corporate job. And just like every other photographer, all of a sudden I found something that I was really like loved doing, fell in love with it. And I fell in love with the idea of being my own business owner even more. Mm -hmm. So started my photography studio. I shot about 40 weddings a year for six years. So Mm -hmm. 
we had a very wonderful run. Um, and uh, it was about 20, 20, I don't know, 17, 18, when I started to realize in the photography industry, the thing that I love the most, which was technology, mm-hmm. was what most other photographers were really intimidated by. Mm-hmm. So I started doing some education through the studio, like here's how to create systems, here's how to improve your processes, technology is not scary. You just have to get comfortable with it. And then started leading into doing it full time. And that's when Tech Savvy Creative was born. So we launched Tech Savvy Creative in 2020. And now I do that full time. So kind of phased out of the wedding world very slowly. I stopped taking weddings in 2020. And gosh, it took almost two plus years to fully phase out because in Texas, we book weddings out about two years (laughs) in advance. So (laughs) Um, so it took a long, it was a very slow fade into the sunset. Um, so now I teach photographers and creatives how to use technology in their business and go from being tech overwhelmed to tech empowered. And I love learning about new tools and showing other photographers and creatives how to use them. And I get to do that every single day now. And it's really a dream come true. (laughs) I've, I recall when you were, when, when Tech Savvy Creative first came to the internet <laughs> and Here we are. um you know i i've enjoyed watching it get to where it is and so it's a uh, you know this is the first time you and i are chatting but um, yeah you know that i have been admiring what you've been doing since you started doing that so um well thank I'm... you i appreciate that <laughs> i feel uh very uh sometimes alone in that my little mm. corner of the internet because it's not talked about a lot but um, it's been kind of exciting, especially the last you know six months to a year, because mm. AI is becoming so yeah. um, mainstream that people yeah. are starting to realize, like, oh, I kind of have to pay attention to this. And yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm here for you. Like, I would love to help <laughs> right. you. So it's it's all kind of coming full circle even more. Um, but I I truly love what I do. I get to do what I'm passionate about with, but with people that I'm even more passionate about than the yeah. corporate environment. So it's really you know, it's amazing. Yeah. So before we dive into the questions that I that I have for you, um, last comment is that I am very happy that mm-hmm. what you talk about, what you educate people about with technology and you know for photography, is a very male dominated niche. <laughs> so True I am that. <laughs> very happy that you have um, you know not only built what you built but made a name for yourself in this mm. genre of, of education, the photography space, because it needs more people like you um, yes. that are not men <laughs> to, to yes. talk about it. I mean, so. that's true in technology across the board. You know, yes, um, I was one of like two women in my graduating class in college. Um, it the Luckily, the, I went to work as a software engineer for USAA, and USAA is very passionate about having like a third of the workforce, you know, be women and veterans. And they're really good on making sure everybody is very diverse. So I Mm -hmm. came into a very diverse workplace, but across the board, technology is very male dominant. And, you know, I think there's amazing male educators out there that teach on technology. Um, Like I'm a huge fan of Marquez, um, Mm -hmm. MKBHD, like a huge fan of him. I love everything that he does. Um, but I do, yeah, right. Uh, just, I'm obsessed with him. Um, but I think that sometimes it's really nice to have somebody that might feel a little bit more approachable, a little bit more like of a yeah. friendly face. Like I'm gonna, I want to explain it to you like you're five, but not in like yeah. a, a condescending yeah. way. Like, like right. here, like this is a really great place, and I think this could change your life, and I would love to show yeah. you how. So that's awesome. been my goal to be a safe yeah. little corner of the internet. Love it. Love it. (laughs) So for everybody listening, now you have an understanding of who Dawn is and where we're approaching this from. Everything that she's going to answer is not only coming from her own experience as a full-time photographer, but also as somebody who has deep understanding of of technology, of systems, of of workflows, of of approaches for things. So um, with that, the first question that I ask every guest, and again, I'm going to be shifting how I ask this question, what is one thing that you recommend for photographers to do in camera during the photographic process that can save time? Ooh, that can save time. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Well, number one, if your camera has two card slots and you're not using two cards in it, you're going to stop right now and put a second memory card in your slot. Okay. <laughs> I'm very passionate about backups. When yep. I worked at Apple, I worked behind the Genius Bar and 95% of my appointments were something that caused somebody to lose all their data. Mm-hmm. And as photographers, we owe it to our clients to protect their memories any way we can. And it starts in camera. So if your camera has two slots, you better be using both of them. If I find out you're not using them, I will call you out. (laughs) Um, But other than that, um, I actually love to rate my images in camera. Like, you know, like you're, you're shooting and you're in the groove and you look back and you're like, yes. Like you have that moment of like, that's right. I'm good. Like they're going to love this. Just take Mm -hmm. a quick moment to tap that rate button because when you actually import those photos, that gives you a handful of photos to instantly send over to Imagine or to do a quick edit. Um, I know I shot what I call my encore wedding in May. And at that time, I was an Imagine user. I wasn't an Imagine user when I was actually shooting (laughs) because I hadn't been introduced to Imagine yet. Um, But I did a same day slideshow in about three minutes at that so wedding good. because I was able, I had, you know, 30 photos marked as rated in camera. I just grabbed those photos, threw them into a quick catalog and sent it off. And before I could even get my plate for dinner, my <laughs> photos done. were done and yeah. just threw it over to an iPad. And there we yeah. go. I do same day slideshows. And I'm, I, I sat there and I was like, wow, I missed so many dinners as a wedding photographer because yeah. I was doing same day slideshows and imagine just did this for me in three minutes. Like, yeah, it's amazing. But it all starts with rating in camera. So I'm not sitting there trying to pick images. So that's yeah. that's one of my quick tips. So I can share this because this podcast, we're recording this July, but it's not it's mm-hmm. airing August 1st. And I can share this with you now and with all the listeners now. Imagine is getting into backups. OK, yes. we've been. We've been teasing this out for some time. Mm-hmm. We've brought it up, but it's actually in active beta right now to a group of Beautiful. imaginers. So um, very exciting. And uh, it's we made it very, very easy to back up your photos, um, either like optimized, compressed raw files or originals seamlessly without you having to go through any extra effort. So it's a beautiful thing. I can't Amazing. wait till, till that gets out in the world. Um, so I'm glad that you're all about backups because I'm yes. Backups. So <laughs> um, I'm very um, passionate, yeah. and I will be getting my hands on that as soon as I possibly can because <laughs> I teach a whole course on file management and backups. So like, yeah. yes, like, it just needs to be done. And you know, just copying it over to another hard drive is not enough. Yeah. Having a cloud-based solution like yeah. what it sounds like Imagine is going to be mm-hmm. is crucial. I live yep. in Texas. Um, when I started Tech Savvy Creative, uh, the idea of Tech Savvy Creative actually started during Hurricane Harvey because mm-hmm. I had so many peers in Houston that lost Losing everything. Things. Yeah, And, yep. you know, that's great that you had three copies and your SD cards on your desk. But when your desk is underwater, those it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. They have to be in an off-site location. So, Corrosion happens fast. <laughs> yes, fast. it does. And, yeah. I mean, extreme weather and burglaries yeah. and all of yep. these different scenarios, it just – it is you have to have it in more than one place so having a solution that's easy that's going to be familiar to them you know imagine mm-hmm. is familiar to these users it's yep. going to be game changer and sign yep. me up awesome <laughs> <laughs> um so moving on to the business side of things what mm-hmm. is one thing you do or what do you recommend for the business that would either save time or money oh there's so many things you can do but it, One thing that I'm really passionate about Tech Savvy Creative is Mm -hmm. that not every photographer's business is the same. My challenges are going to be different than your challenges and the person next to me. So I can sit here and tell you one thing, but it might not be your pain point. Mm -hmm. My biggest recommendation to you is to identify where the pain is in your business and then chase after that. So I always start with like, hey, if we, we're new to this, you don't know, let's get some of the basic things automated, like your contracts, your invoices, you know, that basic admin process. I think that's really powerful, not only because it's really a good idea to have that in a safe system where it's consistent, you're consistently sending out the same contract and invoices, but I think there's a big mental shift that comes with using our CRM that takes a new photographer from... I think I'm doing this for real, but it's still kind of fun for me to I'm a legit photographer. 
and having that online contract and having those invoices and those payment reminders is a really great way to kind of mentally take you to that level of like, I'm mm -hmm. a professional. Yeah. So I always start there. Um, and then where is it pain? For me, it's editing. I could not, for the life of me, stand editing. It just wasn't... So it yeah. didn't work for me. Um, and well, I joke, and I've said this before, if mm -hmm. if Imagine was around, or if, if I knew of Imagine when I was shooting weddings actively, I probably would have not left the industry. Yeah, That's how well, big of a change it was for me. I was like, what? It, like, <laughs> this is all my problems. Yeah. So we're going to get to editing. Yeah, um, yeah. But before we do, uh, and we'll get to Imagine as well, but yeah, before, yeah. We get to, we, before we get to either of those, um, going back to the CRM, is there... Mm -hmm a specific platform that of all the ones that you've tried that you prefer above the rest that, that you've enjoyed and, and why, why? Yes. <laughs> so uh, full disclosure, I set up all of them. I have done full service setups for Honeybuck, Dubsado, Tave, Sprout Studio, uh, Studio Ninja, all of uh, There's a new one, Unscripted. That's another one. There mm -hmm. are yeah. new ones come and go. Um, me personally, the one that I have chosen to use for my business, for the studio, and for also Tech Savvy Creative has been Sprout Studio. I adore them. I adore Brian and his team. Yep. Um, amazing. He's so great. He's just a great guy. Um, and as coming from a software engineering background, the way that they run their development shop is just so mm -hmm. impressive to me. And mm -hmm. I respect what they do so much. So if you're on the market, I could not recommend uh, Sprout Studio enough. It is very powerful. I find that it has um, more features than a lot of them combined. Um, right. And it has a really friendly face behind it. It just doesn't have the quite the same following as some of the other ones. There's a couple really popular ones that everybody's like, I will right. live and die by this tool. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's... And again, it's different for every person, um, yeah. depending on what you're looking for, your personality, what problems you're trying trying to solve. That answer can be different. But for me, cool. Sprout is my my uh, choice of a CRM. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> uh, oddly enough, so I, I, I'm not a full time shooter. Um, I knew going into photography years ago that I did not want to do full time. So I've always worked in the industry for companies like Imagine. Um, yeah. And uh, I do have a Sprout account. <laughs> Yeah, which, which I use whenever I need to do client work. So I, yeah. I I've always enjoyed um, Sprout as well. Um, okay, so moving on to editing again. Mm -hmm. Let's not talk about let's imagine. Let's imagine. Imagine is not here right now. Um, <laughs> right. What is one thing that you have recommended, or one thing that you have done historically for editing that has saved you time before Imagine came into your life? Before Imagine came into my life, so I think uh, something that's a really powerful piece of editing and editing well is having a consistent workflow with your files. Mm -hmm. We get in trouble as photographers when you kind of have like all of these different hard drives. Sometimes they're on your desktop. Sometimes they're on a hard drive. You don't really know what catalog this is. Um, and I see that happen more often than not. I get a lot of DMs of people like losing their cards or losing a hard drive. And having that consistent workflow of like, this is how I store my files. Um, for me personally, I create a new Lightroom catalog for every shoot because mm -hmm. for me and how my brain thinks, having that smaller bite-sized chunk just makes more sense in my brain. And it also keeps the catalog very thin and very lean because it's only the images that I need in there. Um, so I think that's a really important process. Also for me, when we're talking about editing, we're talking about editing weddings, taking that single catalog for that wedding and breaking it up into smaller uh, collections within that lets me edit and view these photos in different chunks of the day. And for me and how my brain works, that's just a lot less intimidating. I feel more confident. I'm able to see all of the details together mm -hmm. and make sure that it's consistent in the way that I want it. So being very aware of how you're managing your files, keeping them in the same uh, process, being repetitive with that process creating that catalog each time and organizing them the same way each time is just going to kind of put you in this like automatic, like here I am, I'm going to do my job. And yeah. you just kind of get into this autopilot, which is really a powerful place to be. Um, yeah. And it's not going to be, it, it for any tool, it's not going to be autopilot right away. It's going to take some time to get comfortable, uh, yeah. but that consistency can be a real big game changer. And it yeah. definitely was for me in my seven years. It's so, it's so interesting that uh, it, it, it just proves that 
there are multiple ways to do the same thing, right? Yeah. Editing, for example, organizing your catalog or catalogs. There's multiple ways to do it, but there's no wrong way. It's a matter of finding your best way to put you in autopilot to make things faster. Yes. Me, if I had multiple catalogs, it would drive my brain insane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's totally but, fine. Yeah, yeah. But I figured out how to work with my one massive catalog that just fits into my the way my brain thinks. Um, yeah. So it's very, very interesting. Uh, it just yeah. further further proves the fact that nobody's wrong. Just find your your right. <laughs> find your groove. So, and, you know, yeah. it, it, the all of these processes, the end result is going to be the same. We want to deliver an amazing experience to our clients, right? Yeah. Exactly. As long as you are organizing yourself in a way that allows you to do that, it's going to be really powerful. And that applies yeah. to whether you're using a tool to edit or for me in my seven years, I had a private editor and mm. that worked well for us. And I mean, that was my secret weapon at the time was my editor. Yeah. I'm like, this is <laughs> Kelly's problem. Like, Kelly, yeah. like you're the real MVP. Um, yeah. But we did it in a way that was consistent. So it was never uh, chaotic or lost in the process. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> okay. So. Let's now move on to the, the sessions done. Um, what is one thing you do after a session or one thing you would recommend for photographers to do after a, a session in order to increase business? Ooh, so I am of the camp that I blog all sessions and weddings and it wasn't necessarily to rank or to get more pins on Pinterest. It's just mm -hmm. because I wanted my clients to feel that they were worthy of being on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really powerful how you treat your clients and how, you know, when you come in, you're like, oh my gosh. Like when I see a client and they are dressed for their engagement session, I am like, I am putting you all over my website. Like I'm just so <laughs> excited. And that makes them feel yeah. good. That makes them excited. Obviously, there's people yeah. that don't want to be online. And I am, again, of the camp that I want to respect that and it, re respect mm -hmm. their decisions. Um but for me, that was a really part, important part of my my workflow. And if you are somebody that's looking for content as a photographer and you shoot weddings, y'all, you have anniversaries up the wazoo, like from all the years back. Like those are great content. Those couples love to be told happy anniversary on Instagram. So just taking advantage of those memories and those dates I mean, if you took all of those wedding anniversaries and put them on your calendar right now, I guarantee you, you're going to have a very full content calendar just with anniversary posts. So take advantage of it and share, assuming that the client is willing to be shared and just remind them how thankful you are for their process. Um, so that's big uh, in terms of what I would do. My other segue to that is back up your photos. So <laughs> you're just going to back them up and you're going to back them up again and have them on a cloud-based service and have yeah. them in a local. And that's when you said like when the session's over, I'm like, oh, I back those up. Like that's, that's what happens. Um, yeah. So that's, those are my two pieces. Back up your dang Ooh. photos and just remind your clients how thankful you are to be mm. part of their day. Nice. <laughs> okay. So this is my favorite part of the show. This is where... You get to pick a color. Oh, boy. Uh, oh. oh you giving me Slytherin and Hufflepuff. I'm going to go with Hufflepuff. Let's go yellow. <laughs> Are you a Harry Potter fan, Scott? Uh, um, I, I do Potter enjoy fan. the Harry Potter movies. I did see that there's a Harry Potter show coming to Max. On HBO. Oh, yeah. It's not, it's yeah. not HBO anymore. It's Max. That's right. right. HBO, I'm really... It's just Max. Max. Yeah. Um, and, but Daniel Radcliffe said that he's not going to be a part of it. I feel so. like it kind of, well, I guess it's supposed to be like later in time, right? So it wouldn't be weird yeah. that he's like not young anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he's he's very unique looking, I feel like. Yeah. Isn't he not the easiest to find somebody who looks the yeah. same, you know, I don't know. I mean, but it's Hollywood. Anything he possible. will he will be Harry, Harry Potter forever. It, it just yeah, is true. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to shuffle through these and you are going to tell me when to stop. Stop. Did you start? Right. <laughs> yep. You got that Here's good that. mic. I couldn't hear the background noise. <laughs> <laughs> My next question to you is. Okay. Uh-oh. What, what do you consider is the most important piece of furniture in your house? Oh. That had nothing to do with anything, furniture. but I love it. 
You know, I will tell you, as a photographer, as anybody who works from home, having a quality desk chair is where it's at. You know, I I used like a Target chair until maybe, I don't know, six months ago. And then I finally invested and like bit the bullet into like a chair that costs more than my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and it's been a game changer. I love my chair. I have a Hayworth Fern chair. Um, and it's like totally ergonomic. But as somebody who sits and is constantly still looking at a computer, having something that's going to keep my body as healthy as possible when I'm yeah. sitting for long amounts of time is a really big deal. So I'm going to say my desk chair and ha- investing in a very quality desk chair. Are you a sit only or a standing desk and sitting type? I mean, you're you're a techie person, so. I'm- yeah. Um, I love the idea of the walking pad. Like uh-huh. that's kind of like really popular right now, but I also yep. have a one year old and a, f- a four year old. Oh, see, I love the idea, but I have toddlers yeah. and little yep. fingers and that yep. scares me. So until they're older, it's not going to be any walking pads. Yeah. Um, I tend to sit and I tend to sit with my legs up and crossed, like they're all crossed. Up nice. <laughs> Interesting. Um, but that's just yeah. for now in the season of life. Uh, maybe yeah. someday I'll get a cool standing desk, but right now it's just not that season. <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, when the time comes, I have the best made in the U.S., made in Michigan desk. It's what I currently have. Um, uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, you got. You should. When you're ready. I'm, I'm going to need those links. I'll, I'll reach out to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, so I'm the type of person, if, if I could get something that's made in the U.S., yeah. um, I would much rather do it and support a local, local, right, person, yeah. even though it's a different state than me. But, um, sure. So that's what I did. They actually um, get some of their parts from Germany um, because some of the parts are not available to be made in the U.S. But like for the most part, the entire thing is made in the U.S. Um, minus a couple things. I love things. it. Yeah. I love it. So it's a the, the desk. I can shake it like crazy. You will not see the camera move. It's so sturdy. Really? Yeah. Dang. It went up that's cool. Too. It's so super sturdy. Yeah. Um, you'll, okay. You'll laugh at my IKEA desk right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've done my upgrades over the years because I've <laughs> I've worked from home for for as long as I can remember. So and I've I've always wanted to be a sit stand person. So I've gone through a bunch of different anyway. Um, That's amazing. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So um, the next part is something where I ask every guest to look at their business from a thirty thousand foot view down and outline the breakdown. Do an outline breakdown of workflows from lead to delivery. And I'm wondering, can you share what yours? have has you know historically looked like um for when you would get a lead for your for your for your weddings to the point of delivery just a bullet point list yeah sure um so don elizabeth studios was my photography studio um we were very passionate and when i say we i mean me i was very passionate about finding the client that was aligned to my brand my brand was very, I'm here to celebrate you and have the time of your life on your wedding. I met so many amazing people, but my ideal client was somebody that was going to drink too much and then get on that dance floor for the rest of the night. Like that, like she waited for this day her whole life. We are going to celebrate. That was my couple. So that for me is very clear, uh, consistent messaging across my website. Like, like you, me, and the camera, like I'll see you on the dance floor. Like that was like a really big part of my breeding. But inquiries come in. Um, everything was automated at this process. Like they came in. Um, it was very clear. Like all I'm very transparent. My pricing was on my website and it said on the contact form, like I am aware that all pricing information is on my website and I have already read it and I know what I'm getting myself into. Yeah. Like so when people came in through the door, they were pretty warm at that point. Um, they scheduled a consultation through a scheduler. Having that consultation is a huge part because, again, I'm going to be with the bride or the couple more than, like, their family members are on their wedding day. I want to make yep. sure they like me because if I'm annoying now, I'm going to be really annoying on their wedding day. So that was, like, a big <laughs> part. So let's yeah. get to know each other and make sure we vibe, make sure, like, we're we're a good fit. Um, and then I send over, quote, all of that information. Ball is in your court. That was what the mm. words I used. Ball is in your court. I'm letting the system do the job now, right? That gives them the power and the autonomy to say, like, this is it. I'm moving forward. And then they book. 
Um, from there, uh, lots of different automations in the process. And here in Texas, average engagement is, you know, a year to two years. So there's like a long period of time. That is long. Um, I had standalone pages for the sessions so they could just get on my calendar whenever they were ready, regardless if it was a boudoir session or an engagement session or a bridal session, whatever type of session it was. They could go in and choose their dates and their times. Um, different automations would go out to get them ready for those sessions. Um, and then, you know, as the wedding day approached, we, you know, had questionnaires go out, made sure everything was done. That last week is a little bit more hands-on, making sure that everything is good to do. Like, I got you. Um, I even found out like, you know, what colors, what colors are you wearing? Because I want to make sure that I'm wearing a pair of earrings that matches because mm. I cannot tell you how many times that I have taken off my earrings and given them to a bridesmaid that has forgotten. Right. You know, like I want to be that honorary bridesmaid. I want to be that hype girl. So that was like little things like that were important to me. And then, you know, having the time of their life on their wedding day and celebrating them. And, you know, as wedding photographers, I think we get so like desensitized to like weddings. Like it's just kind of like we get an autopilot and we just go, go, go. But they don't do that every weekend. We do. So just making sure that they feel like it was a very special day for us as well as them. And then I do same day slideshows. So they had photos before they left that venue that night. I airdrop them to them. So they have them on their phone. My goal for any session, any wedding is that my photo becomes their profile photo, not mm. some random person that Life took goals. a picture with their phone. <laughs> I know, right? I want my photo to be their profile yeah. photo. And the fact that, you know, and even mom, like, y'all, you want to win over some clients and get some good reviews, go airdrop those same day slideshow photos mm. to her mom or to the groom's mom. Yeah. They will feel like they just like have a pot of gold in their hands. They're just mm. like, oh my gosh, my baby. They're already a ball of mush. And you're just making they them are. Even <laughs> Exactly. And then they see what we saw, right? And what we yeah. see is so different than what a phone sees and things like that. Um, so having that experience, just being there and being part of their family. Um, and then I deliver fairly quickly. I delivered in about two to three weeks. Um, and that at the time was with a private editor. Um, so it could even be faster now. Um, but then even after the fact, I only shot other sessions um, like maternity sessions, family sessions, Christmas cards, all of those things for past clients. You had to be a past client of mine to have access to those. And what I did was I created a web page that basically gave them a standing calendar that said, like, this is when I'm available. If you find out you're pregnant or if you want to take photos with your dogs for your Christmas card, this is the calendar. This is all that I have. So get it while you can. And just giving them, again, that autonomy to have access to my calendar. But for me, also keeping the boundary of, like, this is when I'm doing these things was really powerful. And I kept getting those clients back every year over and over. And each life event and baby is here. And I know um, we're celebrating my parents' 50th wedding anniversary and all of these different things. Um, it was really powerful to be part of their family story. So those systems, those processes, those automations, just create the experience that you want. And that's what it's about. It's not mm -hmm. about, I mean, there's to an element, it's about getting paid on time. It's about getting those things done but creating that experience that not only makes life easier for you and lets you keep your boundaries, but also gives the client the, the autonomy to make decisions and to feel empowered is just going to make your experience so much more elevated. So that was and, my and, studio from a bird's eye view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and even with all this automation, you're still leaving, you know, the, your personality is still coming through, right? It's not just oh, yeah. templates, right? You're, you're, you might be starting from a template for certain things, but you're modifying it so that it's all you, right? So yeah. What your well, what your clients see, you know, and they, they and you, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, well, so Scott, one thing that I'm really passionate about is transparency, mm -hmm. and I would very clearly put at the top of these emails that this is an automated email. Like, not only does that give transparency, like, oh, okay, like I got this random email, like, wow, that was so fast. Like, of course it was fast because I didn't send it. Like, but it was also, that also gives you a little bit of yeah. protection. So if the system does fail you, or if you set up something incorrectly and didn't test it properly, that like, if they got a weird email and they see that it was automated, they're less likely to be like, why is Don emailing me? Mm -hmm. Like, they'll be like, oh, it's an automated email and it's probably busted. Like, it just kind of puts that, like the system is your middleman 
Um, yeah. And it just kind of puts a little bit of blame on the system, which is really nice, especially to somebody that might be a little intimidated by automations or technology. Yeah. It's okay to blame things on the system, guys. <laughs> I, I have a friend who's now using AI in, in a lot of his automations, and his name is his name is James, right? And he's calling his his AI Jimmy, ah. and so so it's his like it is it's his AI virtual assistant who's doing a lot of these things, um, and now people know you know it's it's not James, it's actually his AI named Jimmy. That's so funny, you know, pretending to be James. So, um, but like the funny thing is that he trained it on his own blog content and his books that he's written and stuff like that. So it's actually Jimmy is writing like James would. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, so really, cool. Yeah. It that is, really is so cool. cool for so many yeah. ways. I mean, having yeah. a team, um, you know, I could even create like a wiki of content for my clients. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's a tool out there called meet Cody. It's an AI tool and it's where you feed it all of your like content and data. Mm -hmm. um, if I was in the wedding world still, or if I was still shooting, that's probably something I would do is like, I'm just going to, yeah. Like locations, like you want to talk about a location? Like I'm going to give you all of the content and then you can yeah. use this little chat bot to like decide where you want to have your engagement photos yeah. and then we'll go from there. It's, exactly. it's amazing. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So um, do, do, do. what do I want to go next? Oh, AI. So yeah. um, we're going to get to imagine right after this question, but yeah, AI in general, um, as we're, we, we were just talking about, what does the AI, what does the future, I mean, of AI and photography look like to you? I see it as the transition of film to digital. We are in that phase where digital comes around and all of the film photographers are like, <gasps> like, oh, no, like, <laughs> we can't like, are you a real photographer unless you're you know, developing this in a dark room? And I, I think there was like this really weird transition, right? Um, but now the majority is here in the digital space. But film photographers are still very relevant, but in mm -hmm. a unique way. So I think we're in that kind of very similar transition right now where people are like, oh, this AI, like, what is this? Um, I think we're slowly kind of getting into like, this is kind of cool. Like, I might actually be able to use this. Um, and I think there's going to be times and places in our processes where AI is not appropriate. Uh, like, again, like there's times and places where film photographers are, you know, exceptional and like valued much higher than a yeah. digital photographer by some people. Um, so I think we're going to see that. But I think the industry is evolving and changing whether you want it to or not. So as business owners, as photographers, you have to decide if you're going to ride the wave or if you're going to fight it. Um, it's totally up to you. There's no wrong answer, but just know that you being resistant to it isn't going to prevent the industry from evolving around you. And go take it or leave it. Try it. That's the biggest piece of advice I can give is try it. And if it doesn't yeah. work, then move on. But you will never know unless you sit down and give it a try. And, yeah. and, and that's for any, anything AI. You know, like yeah. ChatGPT, for example, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but there's, you know, thousands of photographers all over the world that are already using it in their business and yeah. having success with it. So totally. I think it goes for anything. I mean, anything um, yeah. with AI. You got you to well, try there, it and see. There's so many different categories, too. It's not yeah. just content like ChatGPT. Yeah. It's not just editing like Imagine. Yeah. One of the most powerful ways that you can use AI tools right now are on meetings. Like, do you do mm -hmm. online consultations with your clients? Do you have online album design processes or to IPS with your clients, there are tools, AI tools that will jump onto that meeting with you and transcribe the entire yeah. meeting and then summarize it. So you're yeah. not taking notes. You don't have to go back and figure out what they said or how do I keep, yeah. you know, track of what this client said versus this client. Yeah. Just using something like that as if somebody was sitting next to you taking notes is a really powerful way for photographers to introduce that into their businesses. That doesn't yeah. mean anything's writing you a blog post. That doesn't mean you're editing with anything. It's just taking something mundane and letting the technology handle it. And that's what's yeah. really powerful. And those the, that tool, like the meeting summarizer, for example, there's a ton of paid mm -hmm. ones, but there's a free oh, yeah. way to do it, which is mm -hmm. um, to use a Zoom, Google Meet, whatever you're using, record it, mm -hmm. right? When you record, especially with Google Meet, they allow you to transcribe it, right? Yeah. If... Um, you're using Zoom and it doesn't have it or anything does not transcribe, you can upload it to an unlisted YouTube, right? 
Now mm-hmm. you've got YouTube's going to generate your free transcription. Yeah. You can then <laughs> download that transcription, drop it in a ChatGPT, and say, "Hey, ChatGPT, summarize this meeting for me. <laughs> Here's the transcript." Yeah. And then, boom! Now you got a free, um, free summary without without having to pay, That's pay a service to do it. <laughs> That's amazing. I actually yeah. use one called Fathom. Um, I really mm-hmm. like Fathom. It's free. I haven't paid for it. Nice. So I mean, there, there's so many options out there, and. Um, yeah. I think that's also a really important, like what you brought up is there's ways to like incorporate this in maybe a way that you're more comfortable with. Like maybe somebody's not comfortable using a tool like Fathom, but they are comfortable with YouTube and Google Meet. So like that's kind of like the way that they're introducing themselves into getting into this world. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite ways is to use a a, a note on my iPhone. And like <laughs> as I'm like walking, I'm like pushing the wagon with my kids in it. <laughs> and I'll be like, let's talk about the difference between backups and storage. And I just kind of yeah. like ramble like what I would yep. want to say in a caption or a blog post. And then I take that horribly transcribed, you know, like word vomit <laughs> of like yeah. whatever I wanted to say. And then I throw it in yeah. the chat GPT and I'm say, fix this. And yeah. then it like formats it and like creates it right. into something that's a lot more presentable depending yep. on what format. So I'm doing something that makes sense for me in this phase of life, but then I'm yep. using AI to like, put the polish on it. So yeah, so many different ways. 100%. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So um, imagine came into your life more recently, right? Yeah. Um, as you said, you awesome. you already were sort of done with the full time wedding yeah. business. Um, mm-hmm. You did get to use it for a for your encore uh, wedding. I did. Um, I, I'm sure there'll be more coming up at some point. But um, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I don't well, I don't me, do weddings, I, but I still do weddings I, once a year anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? There's always somebody that manages to sneak onto your calendar. Yeah, well, but I yeah. so, you know, a beauty the a beautiful part of not shooting anymore is I'm more willing to have my camera with me. So mm-hmm. I'm taking a lot more photos of my kids. Um, you know, we went to a beach trip a couple weeks back and I had my camera and I did not edit those. Imagined it because right. why would I? <laughs> yeah. Imagine does it better exactly. than me anyway. Yeah. And, you know, I found that, too, is um, with Imagine, I was even getting more consistent results. I was getting edits that I liked better, which mm-hmm. I was like, like, I would go and I'll do like a quick edit on my phone in Lightroom and then I'll send it to him, like Imagine, the real catalog later. And it came back and I'm like, well, whatever. Like, yeah, Imagine knows me better than I do. So it's fine. Well, so so let's I, my, my question to you is, is mm-hmm. two part. One, how did Imagine impact your life? OK, since discovering Imagine. But. Secondly, how do you think it's going to impact all the photographers that you're coaching and mentoring and all these things? How do you how do you see that impact going, you know, beyond yourself? Yeah. So part one to your question. Um, I do want to preface this with saying that I test all the tools like I have to, I have played with all of them out there. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, Imagine was the one that stopped me in my tracks for a couple of reasons. It stopped me in my tracks, one, because it was so user-friendly. It was very easy to understand. I didn't have to go to a help docs to figure out what I was doing or how to do it. It was just very easy to navigate. And for me, as somebody that teaches tools to other photographers, that's a really important part. Mm. The other thing that I loved about Imagine was your trial. Like, I'm not timed in this trial. I am not – I don't have, like, 24 hours or just a couple weeks. I have – a photo amount and for me who was only taking pictures of my kids for a little while like it took a long time to hit that thousand photos and it was nice because I got to know the tool a little bit better it's just really powerful Mm -hmm. um but for me where it changed and I actually recorded my first impression using imagine I need to upload it to YouTube summer is here with the kids so I have not done anything this summer but I remember sitting there and I sent it a catalog that I had delivered two years ago. It was not a catalog that was part of my AI profile. So I know, imagine Mm. I've never seen these photos. Mm -hmm. And not only did they come back looking almost exactly the same as how I delivered them. (laughs) I literally just sat here and I was just like, what am I doing with my life? Like, did I, I'm, I'm like looking at ways I'm like, can I start my like tax permit again for the studio? Like I'm like looking around like, yeah. what am I doing? And I just think that's a really powerful, it was just really powerful, a really powerful experience of like that pain point in my life at the time 
could have been resolved with this tool. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is what is going to change the game for a lot of other photographers. Because AI, tools, automations, technology in general, it all comes back down to time. We use these tools for time. Whether that's giving us time back to maybe do some more advanced edit with these photos. And, you know, let's go throw it into Photoshop beta and put a dinosaur in the background. I don't know. Do whatever you want to do. Or what are you going to do with that time? Are you going to open a new part of your business? Are you going to do that project that you've been putting off for years? Or in the case for me, are you going to spend more time with your family? Yeah. Like, I'm a full-time stay-at-home mom right now. Like, I could not imagine being in the thick of wedding season right now with the two little ones at home, but I probably could have done it having a tool like this in my arsenal. And I think that's where things change. You get the consistency, you get the peace of mind. You're going to have the peace of mind with backups coming down the line. <laughs> and those are things that we didn't have before imagine. And yeah. I just, I think that's so powerful. And that's why any photographer I talk to, whether you shoot, you know, a couple times a month or if you shoot 30 sessions a month, try it. Like you will not be disappointed. What's the worst that's going to happen? You continue to do it the way that you've done it. That's fine. But until you try it for yourself and see how powerful it is, you won't know. And that's that's kind of my mission with Tech Savvy is try it. You just, yep. I'm here to encourage you to be your cheerleader like with any AI tool. Try it. If it doesn't work, go back to what you were doing and move on. Um, but I think there's going to be resistance no matter what. And that's that's to each their own. If if you want to be busy and overwhelmed, then more power to you. But <laughs> I know for me, and even editing photos yeah. of the kids from the house, like I don't want to do that. Like yeah. I'll let the tool do it, and yeah, yeah. it's it's amazing. So um, I just I love what Imagine's doing. I think it's really powerful. It's a tool that I use like constantly, even though I'm not shooting anymore. Um, but I think it's going to be a real game changer, and you see that a lot. Um, from photographers that start using that and then they start talking about it because mm -hmm. it's just so good. And you see those people that were very resistant all of a sudden being like, wow, I was wrong. Okay, I'm back. Um, little, anyway. little, little, Does that little answer call your question? We're good, we're good. I know. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was that was fantastic. You know, it's, um, I'm, I'm glad that you're still able to use it for your kid photos. I've been doing the same thing, actually. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not shooting as much these days. So I, what I've been trying to do these days, besides from just shooting photos of my kids, is actually trying new things, new techniques. You know, I'm taking out the prism, which I haven't touched in a billion years, or I now got myself a guitar slide for my guitar, even though I don't play guitar with a guitar slide, but I can now use it in my photography. So yeah. um, trying new things and then seeing what Imagine does with the edit. Yeah. With these experiments. Um, yeah. So anyway, I, yeah. It's, you know, I even yeah. had a photographer come to me and she's like, she asked me for a preset. She's like, do you know of a preset that kind of looks like a little bit more of the yellow tones, like a little bit moodier? She's like, I shot the session and it just doesn't, the type of session just doesn't fit with my current style. I, so I wanted to try some presets. And it was the same week that y'all launched the new um, profile talent one? profile oh, no the talent okay. profile okay i think it's like natural um oh gosh natural uh, studio light yes and so it had okay. those like different tones and she was able mm -hmm. to go into imagine and edit her photos using a different talent profile to see if that's kind of the direction she wanted to go and that's really nice. powerful and yeah. it's different than just you know popping on a preset because the preset is not going to be adaptive yeah. to the photo and that's right that's where the power is and that's where yeah. the magic of imagine is 100 percent um, Dawn, thank you so much for, for hopping in, chatting with me. Um, this is, this has been fantastic. It's a very different approach to what we've done for all the, all the previous workflows episodes. So I, I, I'm, I'm so glad that we were able to make this work and, yeah. um, you know, I, I know there's a lot of great takeaways here that everybody gets to, gets to learn from, um, <laughs> where can all listeners learn more about you, connect with you, and of course, you know, see what, um, content you're putting out and what education you have and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'm most active on Instagram. I'm Tech Savvy Creative on Instagram. And you can find me at techsavvycreative.com. I also have a free AI toolkit for creatives. And that is at techsavvycreative.com slash AI. So 
check it out. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And we will talk soon. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dawn, for sharing your valuable insights with all the Imaginers. Your experience is invaluable, and I'm so glad you were, able to, you were able to share so much fantastic takeaways with everybody. You have been listening to Workflows, presented by Imagine. To hear more from Workflows, to find links to our guests, and for an exclusive offer for Workflows listeners, please go to imagineai.com slash podcast and be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.